Europe's more hawkish than the U.S. when it comes to inflation. Trichet signaling eurozone rates could go up next month. But Fed Chief Bernanke hasn't indicated a shift in his own low rate policy. So who has it right when it comes to inflation? Is it Europe or is it the U.S.? Joining us right now, Greg Valliere, chief political strategist at Potomac Research Group and a CNBC contributor, Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute, CNBC's Rick Santelli, Simon Hobbs, and I believe Steve Leisman is still with us as wow. well. Wow. <laughs> Big crowd today. I'm going to start Ooh. with you, Mr. Valliere. Who Hi. has it right? Is it Europe or is it us? I think the markets have it right, Trish, and by that I mean tip <laughs> spreads. If you look at tip spreads. I know it's kind of arcane. Treasury inflation adjusted uh, in protection securities. Tip spreads don't show any inflation problem in the U.S. They're down around 2.2. If they crept up to 3, then I think the Fed might worry more about inflation. As long as tip spreads are this docile, I don't think we have anything to worry about. Well, Dan Mitchell, let me just ask you, on appearances as this story is reported, is Jean-Claude Trichet the inflation-fighting Volcker figure, Paul Volcker figure, and is Ben Bernanke the dovish, monetizing, G. William Miller, Arthur Burns, 1970s figure? Well, you're really going old school on me, Larry, there with uh, those blasts from the past. But you do raise an important point. Are we at risk of going back to a 1970s style stagflation with the combination of big government and easy money? Now, I take, uh, you know, as being a very valid point, the, uh, the argument about, well, we're not seeing it in the tips data, but that could simply be a function of the fact that there are so few profitable opportunities for investors that they're just parking money there, and that's artificially uh, sending us false signals about the rates. I think the Europeans have it right. The central bank should focus on price stability and fighting inflation and leave it to the politicians to hopefully figure out how to get government under control and get more growth. Rick Santelli, what about the commodity data and what about the declining dollar data? Does that not matter? Of course it matters, Larry. I think both of the central banks are wrong way corrigans. Let me read you something. Current worldwide philosophical and political trends will continue to undermine wealth creation and strangle incentives. These modern trends produce permanent budget deficits and have introduced a strong inflationary bias into world economies. That was said by Arthur Burns in 1979. Very little has changed. Steve, if the rest of the world tightens and we don't, can they solve the commodity price inflation by themselves? That's a good question, Melissa. I, I think it will help a little bit if they if they feel they can tighten. It should certainly have an impact. But I don't think anybody's going too far any place without the United States alone. But the quarter point, uh, the quarter point, uh, Simon Hobbs, the quarter point is going to be symbolic. The quarter point that Trichet is talking about, I think it's a quarter point. How do you rate the probability, Simon, that Mr. Trichet will follow through in April and raise his target rate? Um, well, as far as the, the history and, and the language that they're using, they are giving the clearest indication that they will raise, by the language that he used, uh, strongly vigilant, that they would raise next month. What's interesting is uh, it, next month, or the period period between now and when they next meet, of course, is absolutely critical, as I indicated, for the other discussion about what they do longer term about the sovereign debt situation. So if that were to blow up, actually Trichet's put himself in quite a nice sweet spot where he could not raise next month as everybody thinks he's doing. And in effect, therefore, there would be a monetary easing that he's created just out of thin air yeah, it, with the words that he's used. Yeah, but, well, let's follow this through for a moment before we take a break. Dan, let me just ask you, and back to Melissa's question, suppose Europe does raise rates, we don't, that therefore depresses the value of our currency, wouldn't that just cause commodity prices to go higher since we all know, know that oil is produced, uh, oil is priced in dollars? There's no question that if Europe has a tighter, stronger monetary policy, that can't be good for the value of the dollar and things that are traded in dollars. And I'm not saying that as, a, as an unabashed fan of the right. European Central Bank. There are these backdoor bailouts they're doing of, of Portugal and countries like that by buying up uh, all their debt. Are, don't make me too confident about them in the long run. But right. sometimes just not being as bad right. as your competitor makes a difference. All right, guys, stick around. We want to continue this discussion about who's right on inflation. 
inflation on the other side of this break. All right, let's continue our discussion. Who has it right when it comes to inflation? Europe, Triche, or the U.S. Bernanke? We have CNBC Steve Leisman. We have Greg Valliere. We have Dan Mitchell. We have CNBC Simon Hobbs. And we have Rick Santelli. We have standing room only. Rick Santelli, <laughs> one point, we were talking about commodities a second ago. The gold price is really kind of saying a pox on all your houses, is it not? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the European Central Bank is embarking on something that's probably correct, but it comes amidst many probably calculations that weren't correct, and it's going to be very hard for them in the current pigs environment to, to really get it the way they want it. There's a lot of cross currents. That's especially true, Rick, because what's happened is we've heard Triche several times make noises about raising rates, and then he's been forced to back off right. as the impact on the periphery. I take Simon's uh, interpretation of this, where Simon suggests that, that this time it's really for real, that the rhetoric is different. Actually, I would just Steve, point out the I, recent history has been he's made these noises and then backed off. What do you think, Simon? Actually, get in there. He hasn't actually said this, 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 this expression, strongly vigilant, before. That would be an unfair right. characterization, Steve. Right. There are are problems in Europe. If you look in Germany and what wage right. rates are happening there amongst the engineering unions, wages are rising. And, and the holy grail for all these central bankers is to not let wages rise as second round effects. I, I, it's very interesting you're framing the conversation against US versus Europe. In fact, it's US versus the rest of the world. The rest of the world is raising interest rates. You could discuss right. whether that's a but wise thing to do. Good result. When and that's right about that in China. Gre Greg Valliere, yeah. you are basically taking the Bernanke view sure. that oil and food and the explosion in commodities does not matter. Is that your take? Well, I wouldn't say it wouldn't matter, Larry, but there's no wage pressure right now. And I, I must say, listening to this debate, taking a lesson from Triche on economic policy is like getting a lecture from Charlie Sheen on clean living. Oh, come you know, on. I'm not I'm not a I'm not a big fan Any of central getting, banker. Well, right. Is, that, is not, that just general uh, racism or is there a reason him? for that? <laughs> Dan, is there, is there a reason you. to say I, I that? I actually think Trichet hasn't done too bad a job. What, I mean, what on earth would possess you to say that? that what's, what's failed about the euro area has been the, the fiscal side, not the monetary Simon side. Simon Hobbs on this point. All right, Greg Valliere bashing Trichet with a shot to the side of the head. Why? But Simon, I'm looking at the exchange rate market. The exchange rate market has been favoring the euro. Now, that's got to be something that says Triche is well, if you talk more to people, right if than you, wrong. Sure, because there's an interest rate differential. But if you talk to people in foreign exchange markets, you say, why is the euro rising? They'll say, because of the dollar. It's a dollar play. Everything is about the dollar and dollar weakness at the moment. And it's also interesting to note that we've got a stock market that continues to rally at these levels, and yet the central bank is still pumping in all this liquidity yeah. and happy to continue. And the, and the government is still on massive fiscal stimulus. And all those bits and bobs don't quite add up. I think the framing may be wrong. I think the dollar's doing exactly what it should do. It is symptomatic of where this economy Dan, really is. is. The stock critical. market's at another level. Everyone is critical here of Triche for being so hawkish on food and energy inflation. And they're pointing out that we haven't seen inflation spill over into the core here in the U.S. Right. Right. But let me ask you, with the reality that people use food and energy really more than anything else, isn't it worthwhile to watch the inflation in these areas? There's no question relative prices matter, and sometimes a uh, sector is going up for reasons that have nothing to do with monetary policy. But when you look at gold, you look at commodities, you look at food and energy, right. you look at the exchange rate, these things all add up. I feel like I'm in, uh, in an episode of the Twilight Zone where the <laughs> Europeans are being more responsible on monetary and fiscal policy, the rest and of we're the world. actually can like we, the French. The can we the just world, stop the with this notion that we don't watch food and energy? We watch it, Trish. Sure. The question is, is it the thing upon which you want to base Policy, yes, and the answer, the answer is maybe right. Is. Yeah. So, so let's should, put up the answer. chart, guys. The answer should let's put up. The answer. That's the, the answer core chart. Should be let's put yes. up. Right. So you would have raised rates really strongly during the time when food rose, and then what would you have done, Larry, yeah. when food and energy were negative during most Lower of the recession? No, 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 no. no. I, right. Where First would you all, have been, Larry? What, in, in terms of defending, so, all right, hang. Let me respond to Steve's point. Okay. It's a very important point. I believe in the commodity price rule. This was made famous at the Federal Reserve Board in the 80s, and much of 
the 90s by people like Wayne Angel and Manly Johnson and Robert Heller and once upon a time Alan Greenspan. What I'm saying is the launch of QE2 announced last summer, late last summer, has sparked a major, major jump in these various commodity markets telling us, telling me, I may be wrong, but it tells me that the Fed put in too much liquidity and that I don't know the magnitude, Steve, but I believe the inflation rate will rise and I worry that the actual inflation rate in the next 12 months will rise more than the expected inflation rate. But we don't see it in the tip spreads, Larry. I, I understand. And the tip spreads oh, are running about two and a half percent. Right. But I don't think, I think the, the me, just, just my mild, and then I got to yep. get out of here. The weight of the evidence from commodity markets and the tips markets shows me the actual inflation in the next year may rise more than the expected rate. And don't and forget, sometimes, sometimes inflation is just asset bubbles. That's another danger. Yeah. All right. We, uh, it's a great discussion. I appreciate everybody okay. there. I'd read all it's your names, but it would take 25 minutes. We're going to be flat out of time. Let me just right. thank all of you.